Hello again, word lovers, and in this instalment, we travel west. We're going to Ireland. Words which came into English from Irish, as opposed to Welsh or any other Celtic language. We've already seen a few. We've seen Tory, we've seen boycott, but to begin with the new ones, here are two that are popularly thought to be Scottish. Whiskey, the Irish will tell you was invented in Ireland, and comes from whisky beartha, meaning water of life, in Irish. And the word loch, popularly associated with the Loch Ness Monster, but also, of course, Glendaloch and many other lochs in Ireland. And a couple of words I'd be tempted to describe as more English than Irish, but let's have a look at them. Clock. It's the old Irish word meaning bell, and it's said, I don't know why this would be, that that went into Old High German as Glocker. This was supposed to have come back into English via Flemish, and that's where it stayed, as clock, as in one o'clock, two o'clock. Cross, that's obviously from Latin, isn't it? But again, this has been on a journey. Although, to be realistic, it could also come from French, croix, and the Old Norse, cross. So with those out of the way, let's go for some proper Irish. How about these words? A shabin, meaning an unlicensed house, although I kind of remember it as being a sort of party, a lock-in pub party. And I should say that, as I am from the northwest of England, our vernacular uses some Irish, so some of these words were familiar to me. A Colleen, we never said that, but we knew what one was. A young Irish woman. Pachin, that was uh, an illegal alcohol made of potatoes, usually. And one Anglo-Irish word that I think most people know is to uh, break something into small pieces. You'll say it was shattered into smithereens. Now you'll have noticed that these are all E-E-N-S endings, and that is indeed the diminutive Let's continue with a couple of words for violence and partying. Most English people know what a shillelagh is. A large stick often used as a weapon. And a hooligan, well that word has travelled the world. This is anglicised as O'Hoolahan from an Irish family name. O'Hoolahan is my attempt at pronunciation who were a notoriously rowdy bunch. The question is, who were they? Were they real? Still within my regional vernacular, you could put the kibosh on something. The immediate suspicion is that this comes from Yiddish, and it's possible. However, in the olden days, an Irish judge passing a death sentence would wear uh, a cap of death, kaip bais, or something similar. The idea being that kibosh comes from this. Again, possible, but I'm not convinced. Let's do something for the crack is a very common Irish expression now injected into English. The spelling C-R-A-I-C differentiates it from C-R-A-C-K, the English word, but the suggestion is that that was the original word. It travelled into Ulster Scots and from there to Irish as a Gaelicised word, meaning a good time. I've no idea what the connection is. And in Irish folklore we find leprechauns, the small green fairy-like creatures. Lu meaning small. Cor, body, that's possible. Small bodied things, if so, the cor being a body would come via French. The shamrock. Sham Vian Bocht is poor old woman in Old Irish and was a name, a literary name for Ireland in times gone by. Possibly where we get Shamrock, the word. Banshee is the, the kind of wailing female ghost combining Ban, the Irish word for woman, and Sheen, meaning a place where fairies live. Not that banshees are usually pleasant. I think they presage death normally. And from the landscape, bog. The suggestion is that bogach is an Irish word, and that's where we get bog from. 
brogue, meaning shoe, and also by extension an accent, possibly just simply relating the manner of speech to the, the person that typically would wear that shoe. You put galore after something, meaning a lot of, go lore, until plenty. All these definitions, by the way, I'm taking from the, the Oxford English Dictionary. If you want to know more, I'm sure there'll be more specialised dictionaries to help you out. But here are a few more of these possibly Irish words. I didn't know that gob was mouth in Irish, although apparently colloquially it in fact means beak, so it can be used to describe a nose as well. Although in English it's a, it's a mouth. Shut your gob, shut your mouth. And two nice histories to finish. The word phony, again probably, not definitely, from an English word phony, which meant um, a brass ring used by swindlers. So it passed off as gold. And this name was derived from the Irish fain, meaning ring. And slogan, a phrase used by a specific group, is as old as 1704. But earlier than that, it was slur gaim, and it meant a battle cry, the battle cry of the Gaelic clans.